KFSR and CMAC present the Central Valley Ledger, a public affairs program featuring stories from all over the Central Valley with Sevag Tediosian, 90.7 KFSR. Welcome to the Central Valley Ledger, a show highlighting community members that have a positive influence on the Valley. I'm your host, Sevog Tatiosian. We're recording out of the beautiful downtown Fresno studios of the Community Media Access Collaborative in Fresno and Clovis, and broadcasting on 90.7 FM KFSR and CMAX Public Channel. In this edition of the Central Valley Ledger, we'll be talking to Mark Casey and Shikola Thompson, the director and producer of the movie Detention Day. Shakola, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. We also have Mark on Skype here with us as well. Mark, welcome to the program. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> so, Shakola, let's start with you. You're actually from Fresno. Tell us the Fresno connection. Yes. Um, well, I was born in Fresno, and all my family lives out here, my, all my friends. And I was raised in Fireball, California, which is, a, you know, the small town on the outskirts of Fresno. So as a kid, I would always come out here, visit my aunties and cousins, and everyone lives out here. My mom, my dad, they all stay out in Fresno. You know, Family must be important to you. And the reason I'm asking you the question is you've got some family in the studio here. <laughs> How important was family to you growing up? Oh, family is extremely important to me. They're my backbone. They're my support system. So, I mean, I do it because of them, you know, they, so, they drive me. <laughs> so when you decided that you want to go to L.A., what was the family like? Um, well, at first, my grandmother, she was against it. You know, she was like, no, I want you to move you know, closer to us. I want you to go to school in Sunnyvale. And I'm like, no, I found another college in Long Beach. I think I'm going there. Mm -hmm. And she was like, no, you know, she didn't want me to move at first. But, you know, after I, you know, got out there and, you know, I came back often to visit, she was okay with it. Let's ask Mark now. Mark is joining us from Detroit, Michigan. Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I went to USC Film School uh, in Los Angeles, and so I've been residing in Los Angeles for the last 20 years, uh, but I, I, I go back and forth to Detroit, uh, which is my hometown where I was born at, and I kind of travel when I make movies, so I go to different cities. I've made movies in, in also different countries, also like Haiti, so I kind of get around uh, when it comes to making movies. Uh, uh, but presently, I'm in Detroit. You know, tell us a little bit about making movies in different places like Haiti. Are things much more different than they are in the United States or L.A.? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a place like Haiti, if I've been, you know, somewhat of a third, uh, you know, world country in a sense, uh, it, it's, uh, it, we had to bring all the equipment there, which... which you know, you normally don't have to do that when you normally go to another country. Uh, a lot of times they have equipment available. Uh, but Haiti, we, we, we had a base in Miami, so it's, it's quite different because you have the language barriers also. They, they, they speak a, uh, French and a patois, uh, they speak a Creole language that uh, they created as well. So it was, it was pretty much difficult. Right after I left, they had that big uh, earthquake. Wow. Uh, which was great. After I left, I said that was the key word. <laughs> but as far as the experience of, sh of shooting a movie in another country, that was a great experience for me. Shakola, let's talk to you a little bit about your career. Why decide to be an actress? I mean, what is it about this industry that kind of grabbed you and moved you to L.A.? Well, I mean, as a kid growing up, I was always performing. You know, I performed in different talent shows. Um, I always wanted to just, you know, be the like you know life of the party and just perform and have a good time and and I think that that kind of um, you know evolved a bit when I moved to Los Angeles and I attended fashion school and that went to modeling and then from modeling I jumped into acting and you know from acting I started producing so it was always like I wanted to be hands-on and create something you know you know a lot of people think that they're going to move to L.A., they're going to all of a sudden make a movie, make a ton of movie money, and have paparazzi following them. <laughs> now, in the industry, we know that that's 
actually not true. But tell us a little bit about how hard this work is. I mean, it's not just you get a piece of paper, you read on camera, and you're done, right? Right. It, you know, it's very difficult uh, to be an actor in L.A. Um, there's millions of people that move from small towns to go to L.A. And, you know, going on auditions every single day, you have to be, you know, prepared. You know, it's not, it's nothing that, it's nothing, nothing ever happens overnight. You always have to put work in and keep going and um, studying. Studying is a big part of it, you know, taking acting classes. So it's a process. It's not like, oh, you know, I'm going to be an actress and that's it. You know, it starts, you know, from the ground up. Most people, I mean, some people are really lucky and they get that one movie and they take off, you know. But um, it's, it, it's a lot of hard work and dedication, you know. Mark, I want to ask you about luck in this industry. There are some movies that, you know, come across with hardly any budget, with a camcorder, and <laughs> I don't want to criticize or say anything bad about The Blair Witch Project, <laughs> but we all know that The Blair Witch Project was kind of a lower budget film, and it exploded. And so how, how likely is something like that, Mark, in this industry? Well, it's more likely than, than not uh, nowadays because the equipment is even cheaper than it was back when they made uh, uh -huh. the Blair Witch Project. The equipment is even, you know, you can buy equipment now for less than $5,000. Uh, so the, that happening can happen even more often now. Um, but I would say that the studio system is still in effect. So uh, a lot of the independent films now are more here to uh, the Netflix and the Amazons. Uh, the studios still have a lot going from the theatrical films and uh, exhibitors uh, like the AMCs and Carmichael's and uh, the Regals, they kind of hold their spots for studio films. Uh, so you would have to have a, a, a movie to have some type of, uh, some type of uh, big actor in, it in order to get uh, that to happen. Uh, even like Moonlighting was an independent film in, in, in a normal sense. It was made for uh, very little money compared to uh, uh, Hollywood's uh, standard. I think it was made for like 2.5 million or something like that, uh, which is ridiculously low when it comes to Hollywood and it won the Oscar. Uh, but then he had, he had a few names on it that kind of got a lot of uh, noise. So I would say the ratio now is, is pretty much the same, but um, I, I, you can't see, you, you don't, the, the horror films are totally different anyway. Uh, horror films are something that you can kind of sneak in and don't have a star. Uh, but a lot of independent films and studio films, as you know, you have to have a, a star driven. Uh, but horror film, films, is, no one cares about a major star. They, they want to, the storyline is what really kicks it off, like, like Get Out. It, it was no major stars in Get Out at all. And, uh, but the storyline was very popular. So I, I would say that it's easy, it's easier now because of the equipment, uh, and, but you still have that strong story, so you still have to come up with a great idea. But the equipment now is so, it's, it's so accessible now, it's, it's, you really don't have an excuse not to make a movie if you, you know, if you have a good story, you can kind of do it now. Let me ask you about your film, Detention Day. Mark, can you tell us a little bit about Detention Day? Uh, yeah, actually, I'm a, she's a better pitcher. She's, <laughs> I wrote the film, but, but she called her pitch film more okay. than, so, you know, so. the producer pitches the film. So, so, so we'll, we'll take your lead. <laughs> we'll take your lead on this one and come back to Shikola. Yeah. Shikola, tell well, us about back. Detention Day. <laughs> Well, Detention Day is about 12 high school students. Um, they come from different backgrounds. Um, uh, they talk about, they all come together and detention. You know, they're bad. So, you know, one student gets um, detention for, um, you know, trying to run a drill press through his arm because he's confused about his sexuality. You know, um, so it's just about uh, several different students and they, uh, just talk about the different issues that they face going to school. We have three um, uh, white kids that's in the film, and they're out of place. You know, they go to an all-black school, so they feel like the minority at the school. Um, 
So that's pretty much what it's about. It's more so an urban day version of Breakfast Club, but I would say with the twist. If you ever saw that movie, um, you know exactly what this film is. Before we show the trailer, which we're going to show right now, how would you categorize the genre? Is this a comedy or is this like, it's not a horror story, but is it a comedy or is it a well, drama? This is an actual drama. You know, the, the kids, when they come together, they talk about all the issues that they face. They, you know, have a, a sincere heart to heart moment. You know, some of them cry. And I mean, it's more, it's some more of a drama and there's some comedic timing in this film as well. So now let's go ahead and show the trailer for the film. We'll come back and talk a little bit more about it, but let's show the film now, the trailer. Welcome to Saturday Detention. You know how embarrassing it is, son, to sit in the church on a Saturday morning in front of all those folks. It's not like you're going to a club or something. I'm even going to work on an essay about who you are and who you want to be. I want to be like a showgirl or something. Nah, I'm dating with Trip. What's up, crazy little girl? Auntie? How does she know your auntie? All right, everybody, meet my big sister Asia. She wants to keep her identity a secret because she thinks I'm a freak. <laughs> You are really starting to make me look bad. You and Asia walk around school in your cheerleading uniforms like y'all own the place. We do. I thought you knew that. Deja, I know you don't know this lame, do you? Cause you ain't beautiful. What I show no makeup wearing ass. You know, girl. <laughs> My headphones like that, man. Brian Fields is a bad scene. You want to be a hip hop star, or some rap artist. Hey, yo, Wuma, I said, what up? <laughs> Man, let go. Get off Why of her. Why let go of me? Damn it. Let's get it in. Come on, let's get it in. And I'm not going to waste my time on the dumb, weed smoking, hip hop wannabe slave. I told you he was a loser. I always wondered what it was like to be with a black girl. You better hurry up and find out, man. I might rather go make my moves on her. It's not about color. I think she's really cute. Everybody knows your man is up. Unlike me, I was born into a lifestyle. I have to be in that certain type of way. Wow. You look so beautiful. Thank you. In detention, flow, they got me. I hear music. You listen to music, Mr. KC? In detention, flow, they got me. In detention, flow. In detention, flow, they got me in detention, flow. I can't believe this. Oh, me, nappy. I'm so hard At least my hairline don't reach in the middle of my damn forehead like that. Welcome back. And so we just got done watching a trailer of Detention Day. And so... We have a couple of recognizable guests. We have one in the studio, Shakola Thompson, and we have on Skype Mark Casey, who is also in the film. And I didn't realize realize till today actually he's in the film too. Which which character does he play? So Mark, uh, he actually plays Mr. Casey in the film. Um, so he's the <laughs> the janitor slash teacher. You know, so he's actually he's a janitor slash assistant principal. They're giving him a trial to be the assistant principal. So he takes his job extremely overboard and tries to do, <laughs> you know, tries to pay attention to the kids and be on them. And then he kind of like falls back. And, you know, that's why the kids do various different things while they're in detention, because he's, you know, has his own problems that he's dealing with, you know. So the this movie is going to be shown special show. In Fresno, of yes. all places. Tell us about the Fresno show. Hello. The Fresno screening, I, I entitled it a special screening of Detention Day because it's very special to bring this film uh, to Fresno. So it gives my family and friends um, a chance to come view it. We actually have a Amazon deal. So we signed a deal with Amazon and, you know, I'm bringing this out here right now. Um, so all of my, you know, people can get a sneak peek preview of it um, before it shows on Amazon in September. So that was one of the reasons why I want to bring it out here. Um, the, the screening is actually at the Tower Theater um, and that's in the Tower District in Fresno. So I, I'm so excited. How can people find out more information about the screening or purchase tickets? Um, you guys can go to eventbrite.com slash detention day. Uh, tickets are $11 for general admission. 
uh, we have $20 VIP tickets. Um, you can purchase those on eventbrite.com slash detention day as well. Um, you can also purchase tickets at the box office at Tower Theater, um, which is located in the Tower District in Fresno off of Olive Street. Why should people come see this film? We have audience members that are interested in community affairs. They're interested in what's going on in the community. Why would it be so special for them to come see this film at the Tower Theater? Well, um, you know, for one, it's an independent feature film. And, um, you know, it's a great movie. It has a great storyline. So I feel like, you know, that's one of the reasons why people should come out and support it. And also, you know, not only are, you know, we're independent. Um, we, Mark and I were actually partners. Um, and we do independent feature films all the time. So the next feature film we're planning on shooting here in Fresno to give local talent out here a shot. You know, so that's one of the reasons why um, we're bringing this screening out here so you guys can see, you know, our workability and, you know, the quality of our films and also, you know, hopefully one day be a part of it, you know, as far as talent. If you're behind the scenes, um, you know, working, you know, PAs, uh, producers, you know, you're trying to break into the business any, in any way, you know, definitely come out and meet us so, you know, we can figure out how we can, you know, intertwine you know, our next project shooting out here. Mark, I want to ask you about challenges in making a film like this. I mean, people don't realize the amount of work that go into actually making a film. Talk about some challenges, Mark. Well, basically, the, the biggest challenge would be uh, the actors, dealing with the actors, um, uh, especially a lot of times, I like uh, Shakola, I'll piggyback on what Shakola was saying. Uh, we, we are doing a movie in Fresno, and I'm always looking for my next new act. Uh, when I say that, meaning my next new uh, up-and-coming star. Uh, I, I discovered uh, Brandon T. Jackson, who did uh, the Percy Jackson series, and, and he did Tropic Thunder uh, with Ben Stiller. Um, also, uh, Essence Atkins, who did scary movies with uh, uh, Damian Wayans, uh, uh, brother uh, Marlon Wayans, and... Uh, also, the new Tupac movie, uh, the young girl is playing Jada Pickett. Her name is uh, Katarina Graham. Uh, I discovered her in the movie I did called Forbidden Fruits. Uh, so I have uh, the ability to kind of spot or uh, find uh, a star, and I'm looking for my next one in Fresno. So a lot of times when the challenge is, is with the person I may meet in Fresno, may I may have to have them do some uh, coaching, uh, acting class, or some training. But a lot of times I, I find people that are naturals. And uh, when you have a natural ability, it is sometimes it's, you can kind of pick up real well uh, as far as your acting skill. Because a lot of times you have what they call a class clown, if you will. And so yeah. he's naturally or a person that tells a lot of fibs. They naturally know how to act. So <laughs> I kind of take that and, and enhance it. Uh, uh, but I would say the biggest challenge in is dealing with new actors because it's, 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 it's called hurry up and wait. When you're making a feature film, you you sit around, sit around. Sometimes you sit around for 12 hours and you never get to your scene. So you can get discouraged and you might want to quit. You, you get mad and you think, oh, is it because this is a small budget independent film? No. On Michael Bay's film, Transformers, some people sat around for two or three days and never got to their scenes. Yeah. And we're talking about a uh, $200 million film. So so it's, it's no guarantee, you know, time-wise. So it's a hurry up and wait type of business, and you have to have thick skin. So that's my major challenge is dealing with individuals. And, and the equipment and writing and all that stuff I'm trained for, but you can never be trained for, you know, dealing with people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that could be, you know, that could be a major challenge. Tell us about fundraising. Now, I always say if you have an opportunity to go out there and get involved in a film, volunteer, learn the business, because that's the best way. But regardless of if you've got all volunteers or not, it takes money to run a production. You need even the simplest things as buying food for the crew and, you know, doing the costumes and stuff. Talk about the fundraising of, of, it, of it, because I think people don't understand the challenges that come with fundraising. Well, that's that, that that's 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 another thing that I think is important. With going back to the, the the answer I gave about technology, even though the technology has changed and it has made it very easy to make movies, it, they, they don't tell you the whole story. 
<laughs> you can buy a camera or rent a camera, but at the end of the day, you have to do what they call post-production. And even if you got a bunch of free food or you had your grandmother cook for you, uh, she's not going to be able to edit and colorize it and, and uh, add music. You got to get legal rights for that. So post-production can be a very challenging and very costly thing. So it's very expensive to do a movie, even if, you know, you, you hear people say, oh, I made this movie for $8,000. In actuality, they may have shot that movie for 8000 but you cannot really make a real movie uh, for that low amount. Even like Blair Witch. Blair Witch said they shot it for 20000 or 15000 and they made $100 million. But in actuality, uh, when, it, when the studio took it over, they wound up reshooting a lot of things and dumped a lot of move, money into the film. So don't, so don't believe the hype. It, it's very expensive. <laughs> Fundraising, um, I've been fortunate enough that I have... Uh, some of my own funding, and uh, I, I do do some type, some fun. You can do the GoFundMe and th things of that nature, but I, I, I noticed that's starting to be um, saturated now. The GoFundMe, everyone is GoFundMe now, and uh, what's the other one called? It's another crowdfunding uh, uh, site. Uh, even Spike Lee is on one of them, so it's starting to be oversaturated. Indiegogo. And so it's, it's better to be on one on one. Like if you're in the community, you, you go to the dentist's office, the doctors, the lawyers. And, and let them know what you're doing. That might be a better way. That can be your uh, personal fundra uh, fundraising is, is meeting people individually. Shikola, let's talk to you a little bit about the film, Detention Day. It's going to show in Fresno. So people in Fresno have an opportunity to go out and check it out at the Tower, Tower Theater. What can we expect? I mean, I, I haven't seen... Okay, don't laugh at me. <laughs> I know there'll be people out there who will laugh at me. And I'm sure it's a great film. The Breakfast Club, I haven't seen it. So um, talk to us about what we should expect for Detention Day. Um, well, you know, I'm, I'm bringing a little bit of Hollywood, the Hollywood vibe, you know, the L.A. vibe to Fresno. So I'm having a red carpet. There's going to be a red carpet out. There's going to be pe people taking pictures, you know, uh, free popcorn. Um, the movie itself, I mean, if anyone ever experienced detention, if you ever had detention ever in your life in high school, you definitely want to come out and check out this film. I mean, me, I've had... <laughs> uh, several detentions <laughs> growing up. So um, it's just something that everyone can relate to. You know, either their kids had detention or them personally, they had a detention before. So it's, it's something that it's very relatable. How, what are your thoughts going to be when you're sitting at the Tower Theater, you've got your family with you, you've got your friends with you, you've got strangers with you, <laughs> and the film, it's going to darken Mm -hmm. The room is going to darken and the film is going to start. What's going to go into Shikola's mind on that time? Um, I actually, I'm going to have, I will have a sense of release. Uh, maybe I could just relax a little <laughs> bit, you know. <laughs> um, and this is no, actually, <laughs> <laughs> this will be my first time watching this movie in um, quite a while. I watched this movie about a thousand times, you know. Uh, oh man, I watched it over and over and over again. So this is the first time I'll be watching it in, you know, several months, you know, so I, I, I would, you know, the, it, it would, it, it'll just be um, a sense of happiness, you know, I, I would feel very happy. I want to go to Mark now and ask him about when he knows he has a final product, because mm -hmm. I imagine a movie is a little different than a show like this, but I could sit and edit a show like this for days and I still won't think that I have a finished product. So sometimes I just go with it and just let it go. Mark, when do you know that you have a finished product? Uh, sometimes you have to walk away from it, you know, and um, <laughs> let it breathe and then go back to it. Uh, because sometimes I can say, okay, that's, that's it. That's the cut. And then a month or two later, I, when I rewatch it again, I say, you know what? No, I need to, I need to change that. I need to change that. Uh, I can't. That's a hard uh, answer, question to answer, because even in, in Fresno at the Tower Theater, I'm gonna be in there saying, you know what? I think I should have moved that over here, and I, I should have did a reshoot here. So to me, and that's what I, even with the studio films, a lot of the directors uh, they get upset at the studio because they the studio have the final cut majority of the time. That's one of the privileges privileges of having uh, doing it independently you have your own control in a sense sometimes when when i do sell it to the network like tv one they do sometimes cut it a little differently than where i cut it so uh 
but you do have the autonomy over your film more so as the independent director. Uh, so I would say, are you really never just say, <laughs> I mean, it's done, it's, it's enough to give it away. When I say give it away, I mean give it to, you know, to, to the, the outlets. However, as a creative per person, you're always looking at it, trying to tweak it and make it better. And you should know that being in the studio yourself, you want to tweak it and make your interviews better or your graphics better or whatever. Yeah. So either of you can answer this question. What's the overall goal with this film? When do you know that it's been successful? Is success just completing it and letting people see it? Or does success mean something else? Um, well, as for me, I feel like, you know, success is like, you know, we have an outlet. It will be on Amazon. So I'm like really excited about that. You know, um, that's one of, I feel like that's a huge accomplishment. A lot of people don't get that. So I, I feel like, you know, the it's, it's a labor of love project, you know, I love it, you know, to the point where I don't need to, you know, get money or, you know, get any, any special thing, you know, from it, I you do. know, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I love the honesty, you know, <laughs> he does. yeah, he does. But you know, me, it's more so like people kids. can, <laughs> <laughs> right. So I gotta get some money on the movie. Absolutely. I make movies to make money. Absolutely. And so, that's why people should go out and support this film. Is, That's right. You know what? It's going to be showing in Fresno at the Tower Theater. Um, occasionally, we'll have special events like this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's a good way to go out and see Hollywood, what Hollywood's like, but in Fresno. That's right. And we're going to have a red carpet. Like I said uh, previously, we have free popcorn for you. Um, we also have a meet and greet. So you can come out and meet the director. You can meet the cast. Um, we have a special yeah, I'm performance. I'm looking for new actors now. So Fresno, I need Fresno to listen up. I love his honesty. Like I, I, oh, absolutely. There's doing studio movies. And that's another thing about Hollywood. You have to have some type of reel. I'm giving you a reel when I shoot the film in Fresno. I'm shooting a, a major film in Fresno. So in order to audition, you have to come to the screening and meet me or Shakola or someone else from the uh, production company and introduce yourself. You can't, if you don't come to the screening, you can't meet us. And, and, and I'm looking for all types, all ages. Uh, when I say so, all ages, meaning it has to be from 12 and up. Uh, so, for my, the, one of the films I'm shooting in, in Fresno, 12 and up, up to uh, 70 years old. All race, all my movies have a is multi-racial. Uh, I've done an Arabic movie. I've done, uh, like I said, a Haitian film. And, th and this movie here is, is multicultural in a sense and multi-sexual. I have so, homosexual, uh, all type of, you know, we don't have any, uh, we have a Christian guy. We even have a Muslim guy in this film. So okay. in saying that, the doors are wide open, but we, we need Excellent. you guys to come out and support. And, and I would and love I'll to meet some more professional Thank you. And on that note, we're looking forward to seeing the film at the Tower Theater in Fresno. That wraps it for this edition of the Central Valley Ledger. You can watch more episodes of the Central Valley Ledger on CMAX channels, Xfinity 93, UVerse 99, or on CMAX website, www.cmactv.com. Episodes of the Central Valley Ledger on 90.7. KFSR, thanks to the volunteer crew that made this production possible. To become a volunteer, visit CMAX website and click on the membership tab. Thanks again to our guests, Mark Casey, who was visiting from Detroit, actually on Skype, and to Shakola Thompson, who's here in the studio. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week for a new edition. KFSR and CMAC present the Central Valley Ledger every Sunday morning at 1130. For complete program schedule, visit KFSR.org.